Well, thank you very much, Jeff. It's a great, it's a great pleasure to be here and uh, uh, to welcome everybody who uh, is uh, new visiting McMaster. Welcome to the campus, to this, our Burlington campus, uh, uh, a new addition to the university, and we're very proud of it uh, and uh, a place which we're hoping will nurture uh, some very interesting programs in uh, professional education in, in, in business. Um, and uh, it does, as you can tell, provide a very nice forum for uh, these kinds of events. Uh, now, it's an indication of the bifurcated nature of my own brain that I have actually two talks. And I th as I drove over, I thought, well, which of them am I going to use? Um, and in quintessentially Canadian fashion, I'm going to use both. Um, the, the question I was asked to address, uh, what our universities need an administrator's view, uh, it's an odd topic to address actually, uh, partly because of the number of uh, assumptions that are implicit in it. Um, first of all, uh, that universities as a plural need something which is singular, one thing, uh, what, what that might be. So there's a suggestion of the monolithic nature of universities, which I think is, of course, uh, as everyone knows from working in them, exactly the opposite of the truth. Uh, and then there's also the assumption in that question that uh, an administrator is a category of human <laughs> species, um, altogether different from the other more humane uh, kinds, one thinks of with terms such as teacher and researcher. Uh, so... Um, there is, however, too, in the question, the welcome admission that what I'm being asked to give is one person's view, and that's exactly what I'm going to give, uh, the view of one person who happens to be an administrator. Um, but I'm here talking as an academic who has simply had the benefit of a pan-university perspective uh, at a number of uh, uh, Canadian uh, and uh, universities abroad. I've had an intimate perspective on several academic libraries and been very much involved in recent years in the development uh, of the library at Queen's uh, uh, and then most recently here at Mac. Now, if there are difficulties within the universities talking about libraries and the role they perform or should perform, I, I think they all tend to gather around a central point of agreement. Uh, the thing which connects them is the assumption of dramatic uh, technological change and an exponential increase in the availability of information and the effect this has had on the evolution of academic disciplines. Uh, so much discussion of libraries, academic or otherwise, uh, tends to uh, begin with and proceed from this, this uh, uh, scenario of radical and rapid change. Uh, something unusual happened this week, you will have noticed, uh, perhaps, uh, that libraries made the front page of the national newspaper, the Globe and Mail, with a story about school libraries uh, and their endangered stas uh, status. And uh, this has been picked up in other media as well, and it's gr quite gratifying to hear these issues being discussed in all manner of unexpected and improbable places. It was an interesting story, and I, I expect it's probably generated some discussion here. Um, and then in the follow-up editorial in today's paper, I found one statement which I thought particularly noteworthy, and here's the quote from the Globe. At two high schools overseen by the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board, a grand total of three books were checked out last month. In an entire school board, two schools, only three books checked out. And, of course, one could look on that as a depressing fact, uh, a sign that libraries uh, aren't uh, in good use, or perhaps that children aren't interested in books. And, of course, I'm sure everybody in the room will, will uh, be of the view that neither of those assumptions would be true. Um, you can also look at the story as a symbolic of the remarkable change that's happening in the way in which people find information. Uh, it's clear, this is to get back to the point I just made, uh, that technology is changing everything, and it is changing everything uh, in a way that is uh, every bit as powerful in its impact on human culture and signification as was the discovery of printing, if perhaps uh, not more so. So this brings me to the obligatory piece of Canadian content, uh, an allusion to Marshall McLuhan. Uh, 
and the famous Understanding Media, the, the Extensions of Man, uh, from 1964. Just park the reference to Marshall McLuhan. It's not as gratuitous as it seems. I'm going to come back to it. Um, suffice it to say, I identify uh, McLuhan as the, the icon of cultural transformation through the media. Uh, preparing to come and talk to you today, I, I, uh, I had a chance to notice uh, the recent proliferation, when I say recent, I mean the last five years or so, of articles about the radical uh, changes in academic libraries and some very significant studies. The um, the uh, Carl Library's uh, core competencies for 20th, 21st century librarians, academic librarians, from October of last year. Uh, and also very interesting was the Research Libraries UK report on the value of libraries for research and researchers, which uh, certainly makes very interesting reading. And that, uh, that study begins, uh, libraries are changing and the value they provide will change too. And the entire study is a, is a riff on that theme. Um, and of course, this is the scenario evoked as the backdrop to this conference. I'm going to quote a bit from the advertising material for the conference. Unprecedented pressures derive not only from advances in technology, but also from new forms of scholarly communications, student expectations, increased calls for accountability, and greater competition, also financial challenges. And these are seen as both challenges and also opportunities. Uh, interestingly, then, uh, our publicity notes that, uh, notes that the challenges that face libraries are the same as those that face our parent institutions. That's a quote. I'm, try I'm trying to get at the way in which we think about uh, these problems. And it is undoubtedly true. That description of the scenario in which the academic libraries are embroiled uh, might just as well hold for a description of the academic units in any university, uh, the budgetary system, and so on and so forth. All of these key items identified here have uh, a, a very, very significant effect upon the, the issues we deal with day to day. All of this is true. Um, but it is important to avoid the error, and I'm not, because I'm not a philosopher, I'm, I'm not confident in calling it a syllogism, but I suspect it is a, a syllogism. Uh, this is the error of identifying libraries with their parent institutions. Because when we ask, how do we establish ourselves and our libraries as change agents on our campuses, this is a question posited as a uh, point of discussion uh, um, for all of you. I think we're skirting rather too close to that kind of identification, the assumption that what is, the, what is true of the library is true of the university, that is correct. Are the issues confronted by the library, are the stakes the same as they are for the institution as a whole? Now, there's no doubt that 21st century technology is not only making information more readily available, but it is also making that information in an intransitive way. It is shaping it. It is forming it. Now you, now you know why I mentioned McLuhan, right? Uh, it is substantively creating uh, um, intellectual content and the shape of intellectual content. And it is reforming in some important ways the whole cognitive framework within which we approach the world. So Technology is transforming our processes for dealing with information so rapidly that there's a temptation to allow process to supplant content, or at least to mistake the former for the latter. And so here's where Marshall McLuhan comes back in. The medium is the message, flanked to left and right by two poets, Robert Creeley and Charles Olson, in whose famous projective essay we have this statement, form is never more than an extension of content. I notice uh, that in the Research Libraries UK document, the authors uh, cite an observation I've seen made uh, in numerous places, that the more libraries do to make accessing research materials quick, seamless, and easy for researchers, the more invisible they make themselves. And there's quite a lot uh, of space in the, in the British study devoted 
to the gap that is opening up between libraries and researchers because of this. So these two observations, I'm not going to call them insights, uh, these two observations, one, the self-justifying nature of process, which presents itself as, or perhaps demands to be regarded as content, that's the one assumption, and the other, the, the gap which opens up between libraries and researchers in consequence of this rapid technological change. These are the two anchors for what I want to say in answer to the question that was put to me. What do universities need? Libraries may be driving change. So much of what we do, not just processes within, uh, within the libraries, but processes uh, everywhere else in the university, we are told... Uh, are, are useful in driving change. But the key question for the universities, this, by the way, is not a sort of Luddite diatribe I'm offering here. I, I do like William Morris, but this is not about William Morris. Um, it's, it's merely a desire to embrace what technology gives us, but to be very clear in service of what. There's, there's a... There's a discourse that's very common in the universities now, which drives me crazy, which is all centered on the use of the word innovate in an intransitive way, as if to innovate is an inherently natural and self-evidently good thing. I think it is, better than to, I suppose, to atrophy. But um, a university is not just in the business of aimlessly looking towards the horizon. I think, for me, here again, I'm just speaking as one academic. For me, uh, the interest is in looking towards the horizon with the support of what technology gives one and innovation and so on. Um, but trying to identify one, for oneself what the goals are. So driving change, innovation. Um, much of the discourse, which people do like to uh, engage in, uh, presents this as the new pioneer spirit setting out into uncharted territory. Uh, but for me, it is critically important to ensure that a dialogue is maintained between the academic disciplines and the modes by which libraries and other institutions within the university evolve. Partly because, and this is the lesson of McLuhan, you'll remember who, uh, whose insight it was that the ostensible subject of uh, the media is often not the most significant subject, uh, that what is significant comes in by the back door uh, in any uh, assertion. Uh, I think it's very important that technological development be subjected to the critique that comes from the academic disciplines. Uh, it ought to be a mutually transformative relationship. Um, that's not to say that there should be no technological progress that is not sanctioned by the Department of Classics, not at all. Uh, it is to say that there needs to be a dialogue between the Department of Classics and between technological uh, innovation that uh, helps clarify the direction in which technology might lead us, uh, but also helps open up new intellectual horizons within the academic discipline itself. Because I do believe, uh, as was implicit in some of the publicity material for the conference, that it is true that the libraries can have a hugely transformative and positive uh, effect in, in, in the universities on the acad discipline, academic disciplines, partly by the challenge which new technology provides. Uh, but the dialogue has to be preserved. If there is no dialogue, then uh, that, that gap that I spoke about and that's alluded to in the British study will open up and become unbridgeable. Uh, and uh, um, I, I presume the outcome of that would be new disciplines shaped entirely by technology. So this is all by way of saying what I think universities need. I'm not sure what universities need. What I believe they need is uh, a, an evolving concept of the library that evolves in a, in a vital dialogue with the everyday academic intellectual pursuits of the university. And it should be subject to the critique of those disciplines in the same way that those that technology should be a challenge 
to the complacency of our intellectual paradigms. All of that said, uh, that is not an expression of discontent because my observation is that university libraries are, in fact, uh, helping to lead the country uh, in, in a way of, to find the balance between the tools uh, that are available and that can be maximized to not only preserve and share knowledge, but to open up uh, the intellectual space in which new thoughts and new discoveries can occur. It makes me wonder, just going back to the school library uh, story, whether there, there isn't a role the universities could play in helping the schools as they too try to find the best path forward for their students. Because uh, even within the high schools, technology can have a transformative effect on young people in, in these schools. Uh, and it can often, uh, this, well, this can often be possible, but the dialogue, as I say, has to be real. Uh, it's a great privilege to be able to come and talk to all of you. You are the experts in this field. I'm an, a literature scholar uh, with a fondness for citing old, old theoreticians on the subject of uh, the media and its potential for transformation. Uh, I think the issues you've been pondering are hugely important. Uh, there's not a day uh, that goes by when, of course, these things are controversial, when the controversy is surrounding what, what we do in the library and how the library should serve the university. As discussion and debate continues, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think this is vitally important and central to the health and well-being uh, of our university and that uh, we should continue to debate this as our academic disciplines evolve and as the practice uh, of librarianship and the uh, conception of the university library evolves as well. So thanks very much for the opportunity to come and at least welcome you and offer some, some thoughts about it from my perspective. Thank you very much.